Hello and welcome to a review of the Kato HOT 7000. A very, very modern Japanese mainline express, though not a Shinkansen, so it run, the real thing runs on a 3 foot 6 gauge as opposed to standard gauge. 3 foot 6 is also 1067 millimeters. So, I got the one of them off eBay and the other one came off uh, train tracks in Leeds, I think they are. Now, the, the HOT 7000 that I purchased off eBay cost me a £150 plus a £40 custom charge. The one that came off train tracks was £250. So, not overly uh, expensive in the grand scheme of things. Not when you consider that a locomotive such as this Class 31. Another little place here for a moment. It did not give me much in the way of change out of £200. I'll just throw a locomotive. And your typical Graham Farish Mark Three, uh, Mark II coach retails for around about £40 and a Dapple Mark Three about £25. So, I will just move my phone to a more advantageous position and we shall have a closer look. Starting at the front of the locomotive, we have directional lights. These are located up here, just above the windscreen. You've got a white, a red, two whites, a red and a white. There is, however, no driver in the cockpit, but the cockpit is easily accessible, so fitting the driver will actually be very, very easy. I've actually had the body off this coach to have a look if it was possible, and it is very possible. Moving down the sides, you have lovely mirror finish glass. This mirror finish glass is also prototypical. More of a drop. Again, we have the first class compartments taking up part of the uh, second coach. That's what the green car is. And then we have the motor drive unit, which is here, which features a very low profile motor. In fact, the motor sits below this red, uh, blue line here with a cardan shaft to this bogey and to this bogey here. Couplings, it has its own proprietary Kato type couplings, which are the same that of the uh, Shikoku 2000 series. So care must be taken when splitting the train down. I did notice an issue with one of these, which basically it kept coming off the plastic body, off the bodywork. So if you're not exactly easy handling with them, they are delicate. So best keep it once it kept up, try and keep them together as much as possible. However, if I just put my phone here and just get this um, toolkit, just to hold that free for a moment. To uncouple the train, just give them a nice gentle tug and the way they come. There we go. So we're now looking at the drive car. And this is the one that I uh, actually repaired 
and there's a little bit of as you can see there's a little bit of adhesive plastic weld there just to hold this unit in because this module kept coming undone as you can see you've got open gears so just be careful on freshly ballasted track because these can ingest uh, ballast that did happen to my shikoku set and they don't like it your motor is under there amazing okay so made in japan again you have the other one there now these ones also have i believe a traction tire there and a traction tire there probably not really needed but you know it does aid uh the running characteristics of the vehicle let's put the phone down for a second as i bring in the command car this is the control car of the uh, of the train and again you can actually see right the way through the uh, the car there's actually a piece of plastic uh, glazing behind the cockpit and again this is actually true to real life you can actually see it in the um, second class coach on the end there and actually watch what the driver's doing you can actually see all the way down the train as well so it is prototypical not much in the way of a front overhang as well which is very nice um, again typical Kato you can see through the uh, the walkways and the same is also as well on my uh, IET which I also have and you can just have a look inside there the interior is detailed so if you want to fit passengers you can these are a one to one fiftieth scale, not one to one for eight. So, um, so your character, if you decide to use British outline characters uh, for your passengers, you might find they sit slightly too tall. But the difference between a one to one for eight and a one to one fifty uh, carriage isn't really that noticeable not quite on the track We shall take a look here at the Lossic car, and this is a British Outline Class 108. As you can see, there isn't really a lot to go with. Yeah, okay, the uh, Japanese train sits a little lower than the uh, British Rail counterpart. But if you consider the height of the door, and that's what I focus on. When I uh, you know, scale a train or scale a model, I focus on the doors. These doors are slightly wider for modern disability access, as opposed to the slam door type of the, of the 108. I think if you were to put a uh, one to one uh, one four eight character in there, he wouldn't really look out of place. Yeah, the Cato is a couple of millimeters wider than the um, Graham Farish product, but. Not as much as you uh, consider, you know, you, you wouldn't really notice it that much when going around the track. Right, 
we'll just take this off here for a moment. Put that there. Put that there. We don't need that. Right, and take that off there. Now I'm just going to move the train into its siding without the uh, thing. So we can just have a look at the lighting effects. Of the end car. So we press on. Grab this, and now we're going to have a really good look at this. So there are no interior lights in this, but as you can see, you've got electrical pickups. On the unpowered trailer car so you probably could get interior lights for them maybe in a slight butchering of the dapple products or maybe uh, you want to do something homemade but you can certainly possibly do that and the way that the uh, cabin is designed you could probably actually do it taking out either individual uh, couplings link them all together and have your wires running through there if you so desire if that really is the way you want to do it so as you can see we have a red light so there and we have the headlights there this particular model is not dcc it is only dc uh, Kato tend not to do much in the way of uh, DCC for the Japanese outline. I don't know why that is, they haven't seem to have adopted it. And again, to couple these up, you just put the train on the track and just bring them together. Like that make sure that the spikes locate with the holes and a nice gentle click and there you go you do need them on a piece of straight track again just bottom up Nice gentle click, and they're in place. Now, what you actually get with the uh, the model is a very very nice instruction booklet, which isn't unfortunately for me. It's in Japanese, and I don't speak much in the way of Japanese. It looks like it gives you some information about the train. There, again, Super Hakuto. That's the part number in case you want to buy it. You get a parts list on the back. With all the coupling numbers, part numbers, for various different accessories. Such as your, your bogey. For your trailer, your bogey for your unpowered vehicles on coach uh, 742, which I think is the end coach. Which might be for the end coach. As you know, uh, 7042, no, that's the drive unit. Okay. And you got it looks like 704, looks like that's for the 704 and 7013. Are the two end units. Again, 7042, 7042 for the uh, couplings for these. These are what I had to repair, this one here. And, okay, so if we look inside. There was a sticker set, I think, 
somewhere. I should mention some stickers. But I never really use the stickers because you you, know, you got sticker options to go there with these here. Well, I have my own. I don't know what I'm doing. But I never really use the stickers anyway. But it also gives you the car numbers. 7013, uh, 7031, If you want to have it as a six car set. Or if you want to have it as a five car set. And an alternative to the five car set with the motor at the end there as opposed to there. And there you are, there and there. Now these, it also tells you as well that 7013 has headlights. Uh, 7042 has your motor and drivetrain. And 7004 again has your headlights there. The key here being obviously motor. And I presume that is a flywheel. Again, probably more information about the train. Unfortunately, my Japanese is less than you, less than useless. Is it? I don't speak uh, very much. I don't even read. I can't even read this. It's in Japanese. However, the pictures say a thousand words. It tells me everything I need to know. So it gives you a nice. And it actually comes in this nice little book pack. Just like the Hitachi Azuma Class 800. In this case, it's a GWR IET set, not the Izuma. Yeah, that is typical of Kato. Very nicely, I must admit, it is very, very nicely presented. The uh, series again 43 uh, Mashinuko set again nicely presented so Kato have a very good habit of presenting their products in a very good way yeah no I think there's only a couple of other manufacturers high-end manufacturers that actually do that, such as Revolution Trains for their um, Caledonian Sleeper, I think what it was for a second, and possibly as well for their um, Nova series, which is also also done by Acura Scale, which I think Acura Scale are the double O version of Revolution. They seem one seems to follow the other. So you get a really nice presented booklet. Which, if you have a, uh, you know, you're a member of a club as well. These are also quite handy for putting other stuff in when going to the railway club. So when you don't want to take your Hot 7000, you want to leave it on the track. But you want to take some Mark Three coaches or, you know, another uh, train that you have limited uh, boxes for. You can do that quite easily. As you can see, going around the track, the machine is set at about 25% power there. And it's just gently cruising around. Let's just wind it up a bit. Give us a bit of a high speed pass. Right, this is 40% power. This is 50%. Probably not as fast as you probably want to run it. Sixty. Now this is 60. Now we're starting to go into... Probably faster than the real thing. 
But the thing only goes 130 kilometers per hour. 70? Yeah. And that was only 70% of its uh, rate of capacity. That was full power, isn't it? Yeah. That's past that. That was maximum power. So what you've got is a very, very responsive model. Very, very responsive, very quiet. And that is typical of Cato, uh, Cato quality. You know, the motors are extremely good, very, very quiet. And you'll run like that all day long without, with no force, no moaning at all. You, know, you don't need to be ran at maximum speed. They are capable of running at such high speeds, but I wouldn't do it for long. You know, on this particular model with a Gage Master controller, 50% is probably as much as you, you need to run it. Any faster, any way over scale. So let's bring it down to the other extreme. Let's take it right the way down. So now I'll go to the point where she's just about moving and that's It's about there. And so it starts to get a little bit jerky. So about there, we've got a nice smooth action. And that is 20%. So their operating range is very good. 20% you know, power to get the thing moving. And you know, fifty percent power. The thing is trying to take off. But the motor in this thing is very, very quiet. In fact, I was, I would be, I would say that at the slow speed, the rumble from the carriages is louder than the motor. If I had sent my second one round, which is completely identical, I'll just bring it down here. You might be able to see the tilt as it comes around the track. And the tilt is very, very subtle, but it is there. And again, you can look through. Yeah, I'll say the interior door um, light uh, windows are not silvered, but all the other glass is. Which is actually prototypical and very accurate to the train. I've been seeing various videos on YouTube because I actually live in the UK. I would like to go to Japan at some stage in my life. It is on my uh, wish list. Probably never get to go there, but it will be a nice experience to go. You know, on the roof we have nicely detailed. Not overly detailed, but nice representation of the air conditioning pack that is in the roof. And again, very close coupling gaps.
Now Dipole, or Dapple, have got their 156 out, and they've actually got um, pivoting gangways between the cars, so you actually get the, the gap closed right up. However, if you have some foam, you could probably get put some foam in that uh, in that gap. But as long as your curves on the track are not too extreme. You've got the exhaust stacks also uh, detailed. Now this particular train has two, four, six, eight. It has 12 engines. Two engines in every car in the, rea in the real thing. So it would have very, very responsive behaviour when the driver would open the throttle. And this thing would accelerate pretty quickly. Although the engines themselves, the only thing they only have about 300 horsepower, so they aren't particularly big engines. Again, you've got a nice mirrored finish down there. I mean, to me, this is very good value for money. That's why I bought two of them. Primarily so I can have them crossing each other as well. But there's a price that these things are. They're well worth it. Can you fit these with DCC? Possibly, if you know what you're doing. I mean, there's plenty of space inside, inside these cars to actually get inside them. The bodies do come off quite easily. You just unclip them. Well, I'm not going to do this right now. Anyway, I've just seen that I have 27 minutes of this video. And they only have a 30 minutes of memory left uh, altogether. So I'm going to have to wrap this up here. But this uh, train is shockingly good value for money. Typically Cato. So if you really want a nice six car express train Japanese outline. Get one of these. You will not be disappointed.